Many of the battles represented first by the Digital Millennium Copyright Act in the late 90s, later on by the move towards trusted computing and the effort to embed the same idea in hardware, have to do with trying to tame digital computation and communications networks so that the same model, taking information, encapsulating it in a discrete unit, and selling it remains um, uh, feasible, remains uh, sustainable. Now, how should we think about this? Is it a good thing or a bad thing that it's becoming harder, maybe impossible, to encapsulate information in discrete units and sell them? The simplistic answer, the answer that you get from Hollywood and the recording industry, is it's a disaster. How will creators ever make money? Before we buy that, we have to remember that music didn't begin with a phonograph, and it won't end with a peer-to-peer -peer network. Theater, narrative, stories didn't end, didn't begin with copyright or end with it. All information, knowledge, and culture in our society is supported by a diverse set of revenue flows and business models, not only the copyright system. So most of our scientific research, all of our humanities uh, uh, research, is built on a model of education and government funding through universities and nonprofits, not at all based on copyright. Um, most of our classical music today, uh, most uh, much of jazz, uh, much of music that is not in roughly the segment of popular music is based on a combination of public performances and public support. Much of how musicians live is based on live performances, musicians, not the recording industry. The recording industry is very much based on the unit sales, but the musicians themselves very much live off public performances. All of these modes of revenue, uh, uh, all of these revenue streams aren't threatened by the destabilization of the copy at all. Um, what's destabilized is the set of business models that depend on the copy as bottleneck, as toll booth. That creates some problems for certain business models it is far from an impending disaster for our cultural production system. When one tries to think about what the world of artistic creation might look like after the copy, the first thing to remember is that different forms of art and different forms of creative expression have very different cost structures and very different social practices of consumption and appropriation. And so there's no single answer after copyright for all forms of creation. Music, which has been most in the spotlight, is actually relatively cheap to produce in terms of uh, physical capital necessary. It's not the large movie studios. First of all, artists own their musical instruments and have for a long time. Uh, the cost of recording or the equipment to record has become much less expensive for relatively high quality. The distribution network now doesn't need millions of copies to be stamped out or hundreds of thousands of copies to be stamped out. Instead, you can distribute on the net. So all of the core costs of music production have gone to a level that artists who care about their music can largely self-fund. Now, where will they get revenue? Musicians, by and large, uh, musical performers, live from performances, not from royalties. It's also the case that for some of the rights that exist, it's not the copy, but the right that makes the difference. So, for example, when a musician writes music and the music is embedded in a Hollywood film, it's not the copy that protects them, but one of the rights. That will remain between large-scale organizations that have models of appropriation and individual musicians, that right will remain. They don't need to control the single copy in or against 
users in order to capture those revenues. And so when you look at the relatively low cost, when you look at the overwhelming importance of uh, performances to the revenue of artists, and when you look at the possibilities that we're beginning to see now musicians experiment with online, online downloading and PayPal-based uh, uh, payment systems, you begin to see, if not the complete solution, at least the uh, makings or the components of how artists can make a living in this new environment. The thing to remember is that the recording industry has perfected the art of extracting all of the value from the CDs and, and earlier the, the records to itself as the marketer and externalizing almost all of the costs and the risk onto the creators. And so in that system, when you suddenly take out the CD, the artists lose relatively little, the recording industry lose, loses a lot. And the battle over the CD is a battle over the recording industry, not over the musician. Things are different when we look at film. Film is more expensive to create, by and large, uh, but film also uh, has two uh, competing and stable systems around the world. There is significant public funding for non-commercial film, and that has been the source of a lot of some of the most creative and insightful work around. And then there's Hollywood. Now, Hollywood has um, retained control over a significant uh, portion of the revenues from public performance. So the social practice of going out to the movies, the social practice of going out to um, uh, uh, a public, uh, a musician's performance um, has, is what funds musicians. And the recording industry hasn't captured that because they were f focusing on the CD. That's not the same with theater distribution of film. More than half of the revenues of uh, film come from public performance. That's not going away. Remember that the copy, the single copy used by a consumer as a mode of appropriating film revenues is about 20 years old, that's all. Before that, it was all theater-based or attention-based through television. And so both of those modes, attention-based, and we're seeing that attention-based revenues are central to the web, and going out to the movies, both of those remain sources of tens of billions dollars of dollars uh, uh, tens of billions of dollars a year to support the industry. So it's possible that we'll see a contraction of the video creation industry. Well, possible, it's possible that we'll see some displacement from relatively high production value blockbusters that then can be replicated uh, through multiple media to a few of those based on theater uh, uh, appropriation and a bit more of smaller scale amateur video production and people will, will spend more of their time this way. But again, it's not the end of film. It might be a contraction of the Hollywood model. It might be an increase in the efficacy of the publicly supported model um, but in that industry, too, it's far from uh, doomsday. I think more generally, the availability of cheap video recorders that are relatively high quality, the availability of cheap distribution mechanisms, the availability of, the availability of opportunities for people to see film, respond to it, care about it, uh, opens up a new domain of non-commercial film production or small commercial film production, by which I mean something that won't be the primary way in which somebody makes a living, but is part of the mix of things they do for their life, to allow thousands or tens of thousands or possibly millions of more people uh, to engage in film production. The other thing that's happening, and this may be more... Um, short term, but it may actually not, is that as people get into the habit of 
spending time viewing much shorter pieces, uh, caring more about the content of the narrative than the high production value, that too opens up a new opportunity for all sorts of creative people, again, both commercial and non-commercial, to use these platforms for new innovative forms of using the film medium.